instead of showing you my green smoothie in the morning and my daily workout routine, I'm going to educate more audience by bringing more representative of medical writing. First, we have Vicky, we have Rina, and I'm Vera. We all have different roles and responsibility as medical writers, so I'm thrilled to give you a more comprehensive perspective of being a medical writer. I'll start with some warm-up question. What are your daily responsibilities as a medical writer? My current role is as a freelance medical writer. So depending on what the client needs, my responsibilities are to deliver to their brief and within the timeframes that they need those materials writing. Currently working for a PR company and doing a little bit of commercial medical writing. So I'm also a freelance medical writer and I actually work quite often on ad hoc projects. I have different clients uh, within the week. Most of my work is preparing slides. So the first thing I do in the morning when I start working is put on Outlook and see whether I actually have anybody that needs me to work for them. And then at the end of the day, prepare invoices, make sure I've logged my timesheets in, that sort of thing. I'm also a freelance medical writer at this point, and I have regulatory deliverable as a medical writer. So my roles and responsibility also target around what the clients want with the timeline and the types of regulatory medical documents that is needed. The next point is about the environment we work. We all have a background of our home. This is also my usual office. What is the work environment like for you in a typical day of a medical writer? Very much like you, for at the minute I'm working from home. So I'm in my current usual place, my office. I have a monitor, I have a computer that I work with. Depending on the client that I'm working with, they'll either supply me a computer or I'll use my own. At the minute, that's why I do I work from home as a freelance writer. But previously I've had hybrid roles. I've been full-time in the office. So it just depends on the role that I've had in the past. For me personally, I think a little bit of hybrid is quite nice because I quite enjoy being around other people. So when I was working in Big Pharma, I was working out of Dublin and a few times I had the opportunity to go there into the office. I uh, really enjoyed that. And before that, I was working in London. I was having to commute in every day. So I didn't have a remote position then. I think a hybrid is a nice balance. I'd agree with that, Vicky. I personally also like the hybrid working setup. At the moment, I work fully from home. It's basically practical for me to work fully from home at the moment. Uh, you know, I've got a nice big uh, monitor set up in my office because I don't like working on small laptop screens. My preference would be to occasionally be able to go and work in a different environment because it feels a little bit too much to be at home every day. I have worked two days in the office and three days at home in my past job. That was quite nice. We'll see. I have similar situation. I started first with five days in office during the pandemic and then I have a hybrid role that people are asked to go in office every week for only two days a week. And then I went back to full time in office for my client in Paris until I had to move to the US. Now I'm full time remote. It was quite exhausting to travel, but I like the office a lot. And I actually got to sit with multiple medcom writer, regulatory writer. I kind of like the keyboard sound and it was quite therapeutic for me. And now I'm the only one in my office and... Uh, yeah, my cats become my colleague. Let's boil down two most important elements of your day for you to feel successful, productive at, uh, as a medical writer. I could go first. Um, it's crucial for me to first start my day early and do a little workout because we stay at the desk. And it's day and night different if I don't have a workout and my brain isn't started. So working out in the morning was crucial for me and also changing posture. I have an adjustable standing desk. I can stand, I can sit. I have attended this workshop about ergonomic sitting. They say the next posture is the best posture. If you can change it up a little bit, it's good for your eyesight and also your back as well. To me, exercising and sitting posture is crucial for me to be successful at my job. You're so much better than me, Vera, because I just sit all day in front of the computer but I do try and get up and have a, a bit of fresh air I try to, if I can I try to get out and have a quick walk 
at lunchtime if possible just to get a bit of fresh air as I said and if I've time in the morning I also try to do a bit of yoga oh here we go look here's a dog right, there we go <laughs> what working from home working from home as medical <laughs> writer um, so so yeah um oh my goodness um so she's trying to kiss me um so <laughs> So yeah, I do try and if I can fit a workout in in the morning. Just yoga stretching is usually the thing. I, I can't usually have the time to go out for a run because I've got kids to get ready for school and all that kind of other stuff going on. So that tends to be my routine. I've also recently tried to start having a proper lunch break and actually taking a break and not just sitting with my food and looking, at, you know, the, the document that I'm working on, trying to take a mental break from the document and actually coming back to it with a bit of fresh eyes, even if it's just after 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, I think really does help. So my day is actually nowhere near as nice as either of yours. I am basically frantically trying to get ready, get the kids to school, come back, load the dishwasher, get the washing in, and then try and start with a coffee at the desk um, in the morning. But yeah, other than that, I'll then sit down and focus on the job at hand. I do actually have to get up fairly frequently. So once an hour, I try and go down the stairs, grab some water, come back upstairs, something like that. I do sometimes this, if I've gone downstairs for a cup of tea, I'll actually do a quick sort of squat and, and a glute stretch. A quick glute stretch with the cross, cross of the legs really does help. I definitely have my lunch break because otherwise my eyes strain and my head hurts. So I have a lunch break. If I have to work a bit later after I pick the kids up, fine. If I have to work in the evenings, fine. But I have a lunch break. For fresh eyes, mm -hmm. we really need our brain to reset using that break and come back fresh. Taking little chunks of breaks and then coming back is a better strategy than trying to push that eight hour straight <laughs> in a row. I also can't emphasize enough how much I appreciate green plant this day. So I have this lens that is filtering blue light. It helps me feel less eye strain, but also having a chance to look at leaves. Like I really enjoy it. Yeah. So gardening and looking at things in the garden, maybe watering the tomato is something I take a little bit of breaks as well during the day. Figure out how to sit properly or how to stretch in the middle, take a walk, like Vicky said. I think they all come down to good productive medical writing. For the audience who doesn't know much about medical writing, maybe we can speak a little about what type of education or training is needed to become a medical writer. How could someone become a medical writer? Ideally, you need a bachelor's of science degree, I would say as a minimum. Lots of medical writers also have master's degrees. They have uh, PhDs, some are trained doctors, clinicians, pharmacists. It's kind of life science training does help. But as long as you're willing to work and learn on the job, I think anyone can fly in this career, even with a bachelor's. I've worked with people with a variety of different degrees. I really can't distinguish between what education level people have as medical writers. I think it's also key that you should know how to communicate with people. Your written work should be clear. You should be able to research. Those are important things. So how you got those skills perhaps doesn't matter as much as you know that you do have those skills. Yeah. The research thing is the key there, isn't it? Because, mm. you know, a PhD or any sort of research degree gives you that ability yeah. to go away and be self-sufficient and find answers to problems. And I think that's why particularly they like people with a research background because it does help but it's not an absolute necessity. To conclude, can we share one piece of challenge being a medical writer and on the other side, one piece of the satisfaction of being a medical writer? Some of the deadlines when they're pressing, I find challenging to be able to be creative enough in my thinking to deliver something that I think is the best work I can possibly deliver. On the flip side, it can also help me because it can push me along. But sometimes I'd just like a little bit more time just to think through certain things and have maybe you know time to put something down, pick something else up, go back to it. That said, I mean, the, the career itself gives so much flexibility. There's so many options. You know, I've been able to dictate how long I work, where I work, to, to some degree what I charge. So for that, I will be forever grateful with medical writing. It really is such a flexible career. I think Vic has touched on it a little bit. One of the things that can be quite challenging is that if you're given a large project and you're on minute one of day one, 
it can be a little bit nerve wracking. You know, you can get a little bit of that sweaty finger sort of syndrome and you have to find a way to push past that. Put anything on our paper, even if it's complete rubbish that you will never use, start, you know, I would say we, we need to learn how to start something off by just putting anything down and letting some of that nervousness go. What I personally find very rewarding about being a medical writer is the fact that I'm constantly learning new things, particularly as a freelance writer. I work with different clients and even within one client, I might be working different projects. And I, I, I love that. I love being able to learn about new things all the time. I love not just the subject area or like the therapy area and the drug, but also the fact that you can write about things differently. You can deliver the information in different formats that I find very rewarding. Sometimes when you get given a completely new therapeutic area and you're like, I don't know anything about this, but then you get kind of into it and reading about it and learning completely new things. That's quite enthralling, I think. Yeah. So again, like rewards and challenges at the same it's, time. Yeah, very linked. <laughs> Lots of challenge can be coming from emotional intelligence. You have to make the email informative, make it positive language, having the trust that other department could deliver what I need on time and I can incorporate those parts in the document on time and the deliverable can meet timeline. And I think that's the biggest challenge that I'm finding every day um, on the other side is the reward it's like playing soccer with a team i feel much more balanced as a team worker knowing that my work is going to impact the product and how well the patients are having care in the end i think that's sums up why i feel really encouraged as a medical writer so for those who are interested in learning more about types of responsibility and roles in medical writing we do have a summary below so do check it out thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next video bye bye, bye.